Okay. Now the presentation should be up in front of you. Um, I'll just have, if, if there's any problems, I'll have Adam just let me know. So this presentation is LM Digital and more. So what is the Library of Michigan? You know, who are we? Well, we are that institution to collect, preserve, and provide access to the state of Michigan story, and also to support libraries and their role as an essential community anchor. And we've been around for quite some time, since 1828, as a territorial library. You know, back then, our collection was probably around 130 or 140 items. So we are one of the oldest functioning departments within state government. And currently, we have three service populations. We serve the public, like yourself, but we also serve public libraries and college libraries, university libraries, and special libraries, and then also state employees, uh, people who work for the, like uh, frontline workers for the state or the courts, uh, the executive office, the legislature, and so forth. So there's about 28 or 29 of us and a lot of ground to cover, as you can imagine. In 1837, we became the Michigan State Library with statehood, so yay for statehood. And then we packed everything up and who knows how many uh, different wagons and we moved from Detroit over to Lansing, you know, without I-96, without I-94. So I cannot imagine that commute with all those items from there to here. It must have been a very difficult and long journey. But then once we're here um, in Lansing, for the next, you know, about 100 or 125 years or so, there are three key librarians that I want to quickly mention because they really are important to the Library of Michigan in that how we developed and how we are now, the Library of Michigan. So the first one, her name is Harriet Tenney. She was a state, libra state librarian in the 1860s, 70s, and beyond. And she was important because she helped to open up the collection to the public. Before her time, uh, the collection was just accessible by state employees. And with her, then you as a, a resident, a citizen of Michigan, could come and use our collection. She was also instrumental in creating the Pioneer Societies, which I'll mention a little bit later, and later on, the State Museum. So with her, what we see is the Michigan collection really starting to take off and grow. In the early 20th century, we have Mary Spencer. She really brought the library to the people. She helped to introduce statewide services, particularly training of library workers in the community so that they could better serve their communities. And also she introduced traveling libraries. So we would have parts of our collection that would go out into the public into areas that had little or no access to a public library. And what's really fun about that is a traveling library, uh, as a donation coordinator about a year and a half, two years ago, one of those items came back to us. You know, it had its, the, the little plate in the beginning of the book that said it was part of a traveling library. And it was in the you know, early teens, 1911, 1912, that it became part of the traveling library. And this book was then donated back to us in the last couple of years. So that was kind of fun to get that book back. And then lastly, Lolita Fayan in the 40s and uh, 50s, but she was the first person to oversee state funding and federal funding to libraries. Again, to help those libraries within Michigan serve their community better. So they really helped to get us to what we know now as the Library of Michigan. So that 1983 with Public Act 540, we become the Library of Michigan. And that kind of helps to cut down in the confusion between the Michigan State Library and Michigan State University Library, because now we are Library of Michigan. And then finally in 1988, we, uh, we move into the new building 
and become the part of the Michigan Library and Historical Center. And that picture is at the bottom right hand corner of the slide in front of you. The library itself resides in the left hand side of the picture, which is on the west side, and the State Museum and the State Archives resides on the right side or the east side of the building. So I included this picture of the atrium inside the, the library section of the building because I think it's a beautiful picture. I believe it was taken by Adam last year, 2019, for the MGC Fall Family History event. And I think it's a wonderful picture that really shows that it's a, a beautiful building and hopefully it'll encourage you when uh, once we reopen again to the public to stop by because the library itself occupies all of the second floor, most of the third floor, all of the fourth floor, and most of the fifth floor. And on the fifth floor is statewide services. So it's a great place to conduct research um, and to, to come for a visit. Now we have several different collections at the Library of Michigan. And we have four primary collections that I, I want to talk about a little bit. First, we have the Michigan Documents Collection. Uh, this is our mandated collection by law so that any government, Michigan government department or agency or commission, if they produce a book or an article or something for the public to consume, we are supposed to receive a copy of it so that we can create and maintain a legacy collection of those documents for future residents, future researchers, whether it's 25, 50, 100 years into the future. So there's many different types of items within this collection, things like joint documents, different annual reports from agencies or departments, commissions, like the Michigan Railroad Commission, different compiled laws and rules, and some other material, such as the pioneer and historical collections. If, if you remember, a little bit ago, I mentioned uh, Harriet Tenney and the pioneer societies. Well, out of those pioneer societies that grew in the 1870s with the approach of the centennial, they collected a lot of information in about 40 volumes that were published over 50 years that had information on family histories, uh, first and third hand per, uh, person accounts of events and people and places, uh, different descriptions of records within the state of Michigan in different areas. You know, those published items are Michigan documents. And so are the Michigan History Magazine from 1917 to 2009. That was also uh, published on behalf of the state of Michigan. So there are a lot of different types of documents within the Michigan document collection. There's also the Michigan collection. We're going to have Michigan newspapers, Michigan periodicals like the Michigan farmer or the Michigan architects, city directories, plats, atlases, county histories, place histories. Uh, these materials are going to be both commercially or privately published materials, sometimes even unpublished materials. Maybe your cousin John has produced some type of spiral bound family history going back maybe many decades or maybe a hundred years or so. If it's focused on Michigan or mostly on Michigan, that might be something that I would want to add to our collections. And since I have you as a captive audience here, um, this is my sales pitch to you. If you're cleaning out your attics and your closets and you find books or atlases, maps, uh, different booklets, and they're about Michigan or they are by Michigan authors, contact me because they might be something that I would want to add to our collection. And at the end of the presentation, uh, the last slide should have my contact information. And then finally, we have the State Law Library and then the Martha W. Griffith's Michigan Rare Book Room, which is kind of a, an amalgamation of different items from the Michigan collection, state documents, and the law collection. You know, things that might be too fragile to be in the stacks. Or perhaps they are kind of like a rare one of a kind or so few libraries have them. So those are our, our primary collections. But we do have a few other collections like our main collection and our federal document collection. 
as we've gone through the last several years, we have um, decided or has seen that there's a growing need to place more of our collections online so that researchers, patrons can get access to them. So one of the ways in which we have access, we provide access to our collections is through Library of Michigan Digital or lmdigital.libraryofmichigan.org. As you can see on the slide, it is our digital portal. It is a growing portal and it is your one-stop shop for Michigan government law and legislative information. Now I say that last sentence there, your one-stop shop, because prior to becoming Library of Michigan Digital, this particular database was called Governing Michigan. And if you are unfamiliar with Governing Michigan, uh, this particular database was created because as we kept receiving questions from state employees, the legislature, the courts, the executive office, um, we saw patterns and we decided to start scanning these law and state documents so that we can point those groups to those documents online. However, in the last year and a half to two years, we started to think about how to expand that portal to include items from the Michigan collection and the rare collection, uh, collection but to think about other ways to provide access to material. Two examples are below on the slide, Pave the Way I-496, which is a scrapbook detailing the destruction of the neighborhoods for the creation of the I-496 freeway in Lansing. And then the Capital Idea, which is a partnership with the Capital Historian and her staff. And it, it's comprised of two collections, a postcard collection and a chronology, a history of the different capitals of Michigan and their grounds. And we hope to have more to follow. Um, currently, we are partnering with the Presque Isle Library. They received a grant earlier this year to digitize a large portion of their um, local history collections. And we are going to be serving as the host on LM Digital for those collections. So we hope that this pilot project will, will lead to some more projects like it. So we're really excited about that. Now in front of you on the screen is the entry page for LM Digital. And I wanted to point a few things out here because towards the end of the presentation, before the questions, I want to go through a tour of LM Digital and a few of the other databases that I'm going to be talking about um, in a few minutes. So on the right hand side, you have a couple different navigation buttons, like the home button, the about button, which will talk about the purpose and how to navigate the site, the search and browse button, how to get to the topics and collections, and how to contact us if you're having trouble with the site. Now, if we were to click on that search and browse button, what it's going to do is push you down on the entry page a little bit lower to the uh, search box, browse our collection. So you can type in a phrase, um, names or uh, bills or act, uh, act numbers. So you can see the information that is in LM Digital. Below that search box, you'll see a little description that says featured collections. That's just simply an area where we can highlight different collections within LM Digital. If we were to click on topics and collections and then navigate to the collections themselves, you're gonna see them arranged in a tile format, like what you see on the screen in front of you. And as you kind of look over some of those headings at the bottom of the tiles, things like administrative law materials or legislative and statutory materials, constitutional law, case law, and court rules, and so forth, you can see that it's really strong in Michigan government and legal materials. But you'll also see a few other things, like, as I mentioned, there's the Pave the Way I-496 project. It's got the little Oldsmobile Expressway picture on it. There's also the Michigan Charters, Codes, and Compacts. We are kind of seeking out local government charters and codes that we can digitize and make available. But then at the bottom, you can see there's a, 
a couple different tiles. On the left-hand side, there's the capital chronology and then the capital view collection. That's what I mentioned about that capital ideal. And then on the bottom right, there is the Michigan maps. So we hope to add more tiles to this area. And I believe that the upper limit for tiles is about 15 collections or so, but there will be a, a way to get to a full listing as we add more collections in the future. But if we were to search a collection, let's say about postcards, and we were to get a results list, the results list is going to look a little bit like what you see in front of you. You're going to see different columns, and the left-hand side will give you the title. You might see a publisher, perhaps a date, uh, coverage, and so forth. Now, depending what collection you're searching in, those column headings can be different and the amount of information added to the database may be different. So for this postcard collection, why we see a little bit less information is because part of our partnership with the Capitol Historian and her staff is that those staff members are the ones going back in and entering the other pieces of the data in the columns. And they haven't reached this point here because there are a lot of postcards and a lot of information that they have to add to this collection. So just something to keep in mind, depending on which, which collection you're searching, those column fields might be different and they might have more information than what you see on this example search results. But if you want to look at any item within the database, you can go ahead and click on the title. And as we can see on the left-hand side, I have one of the titles. The second one kind of like a, in a orange color because if when I click on it and we see the actual record itself, this is the, the actual postcard from that particular um, results list that I have. I wanna point out a few things so that you can understand the database and how it works. So to the right hand side of the, the postcard or the item, you may or may not see a scroll bar. And on the right, you can sort of see a darker gray scroll bar. And that kind of is a good indication that there might be more than one page. Below the picture of the capital, we can see a page one of two. Again, it's letting us know that there's more information below it. It's the back side of the postcard. And you can sort of see the top part of that, that back side of the postcard below the item itself, whether it's a document or a postcard, you'll have a button that might say item details to get a little bit more information about the item. And then you'll have a transcript button. So that if there is a transcript to go with the item, you can view the transcript there. Now, let's say for example, you've arrived at this page or any page with a document, but all you see is a gray background. Well, that's what that green download button in the upper right hand corner is for. If you are trying to look at an item and it just will not load, just click on that green download button and it should force the item to load so that you can view it. But then again, if there is a problem, just click on that contact button on that entry page, send us an email, give us a call so we can help figure out what is going on. Now, besides LM Digital and those resources, there are other pieces of information that we have you know, collected that don't quite fit as well into LM Digital and they have to have a different resting place. So here are two examples of those types of databases that we have because they really are specifically identified needs and they are ongoing projects. One is a legislative biography database and the second one is the Michigan Authors and Illustrators. So the legislative biography database, you know, why is this useful? Well, for a couple different reasons. Uh, if you're researching family history and perhaps you know of a person in your family tree that did serve in the legislature, there can be some good family biography information, maybe some information on burial and death and birth information, perhaps spouse and children. Definitely going to see information on the committees they served on and the sessions that they served in. You know, give some more information about that particular person and that family at that time. 
And then if we were to click on that, say, blue button that you see on the right hand side of the, the image, um, Explore Michigan Legislative Biography Databases, you will see the entry page that looks like the screen in front of you. And it talks a little bit more about the database. But on that left hand side are your different navigation buttons. You can search for legislators, uh, legislators, you can view them all. You can view them by, uh, by session, get some demographic information. So it can be a useful resource for family history research, or maybe if you're doing some research um, into Michigan government. The next database I briefly want to talk about is the Michigan Authors and Illustrators. Again, you know, why would this be useful? Well, again, if you're looking for family history information, there potentially is some useful information here. You might be able to see some death or birth information, maybe some children, parents, or spouse, perhaps a partial biography of the author or the illustrator. Definitely we'll see a list of their writings and perhaps a, a membership listing to those organizations they belong to that focus on writing or authors or um, illustration. But something to keep in mind, it is a mostly self-reported database. So it's, it's a lot more current than say the legislative uh, database. Because there's in the legislative database, it goes from 1835, the first session all the way to this recent um, election as one of my coworkers is entering in new information. But this, this uh, authors and illustrators database also can, uh, give you some good ideas to, to read during the cold winter months or for your book group. So what I want to do now, this is the, whoops, this is the, um, the entry page to the Michigan Authors and Illustrators database. It looks a lot like the legislative biography database, which on the left-hand side, you have your quick search and your advanced search options, but you also have the inclusion criteria and a submit entry. So perhaps your cousin John or cousin Jane is a Michigan author. Um, point them to this site. You know, we are always looking to add Michigan authors to this database and to, to keep expanding it. So those are definitely two databases that we have that are um, homegrown databases with information along with LM Digital. Now what I want to do for the, the last part of our uh, presentation is to take a tour not only of LM Digital, but I want to uh, take you to our website because I want to point out a few things, you know, where those two databases reside. And as a Michigan resident, to let you know that you can get a library card. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to reshare it, the internet that I have. So give me a moment or two as I stop sharing. And now I'm going to reshare the internet connection. Now what we should see in front of you, and again, Adam, if it is not correct, please let me know, is our website. And I wanna point a few things out here as we take a little tour. Um, if, oops, if you want to see where those two uh, homegrown databases are, those reside under the tab towards the top left called For the Public. I believe I'm drawing a little blank here. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna scroll down. Michigan Notable Books, Michigan Materials. The library, ah. At the very bottom here is the Michigan Authors and Illustrators database link to get there with that button, Explore Michigan Authors, and then the Michigan Legislative Biography Database link here. So that's the easiest way to access those two databases and they are open. You don't need a library card with the Library of Michigan at all. However, if we scroll up a little bit, there is the link to get a library card. And if you were to click on that link, you will see a description of the Library of Michigan library card and, and what it can do for you. But as a Michigan resident, you can get a Library of Michigan library card because there are other databases that you can access from home 
with that Library of Michigan library card. And I want to briefly show those to you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll up. Past Rare Books and the Government Information Link, Michigan Materials, our Notable Books program, because I want to just click here on Family History. Once we're here in this sub uh, page, I want to scroll down past the Family History Resources to the Family History Databases. And as you can see, with your Library of Michigan Library card, you can access Ancestry Library Edition, things like Black Thought and Culture by Alexander Street, Fold 3. You can access My Heritage Library Edition through the Michigan eLibrary, but you also have access to newspapers.com, Ethnic News Watch, Newspaper Archive, the Michigan Chronicle, and the ProQuest Historical Newspapers, Detroit Free Press, 1831 to 1999. Minus those, I think, three or four periods in the 1960s when there was a strike and there were simply was no newspapers published for the Detroit Free Press. So there's a lot here. So I do encourage you to get a library card with us. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up to the top. And next we want to do is let's go ahead and take a tour for the next, you know, five or ten minutes. Uh, before we wrap up the presentation and open it up to questions for you, I'm going to click on the tab for Library of Michigan Digital. And let's go ahead and take a tour so that we can see different things in here so that you can understand and, and see how it works. So we're at the entry page of Library of Michigan Digital. You can also, you know, type the uh, lmdigital.libraryofmichigan.org, or you can use a search engine to simply search LM Digital or Library of Michigan Digital, and one of the top hits should be this site. Again, as I mentioned before, we have these different um, navigation menus, so, uh, buttons. If I click on About, as I mentioned before, it's going to give you the purpose and the organization of the LM Digital site, as well as its future development and the inspiration for the logo. I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up. If I click on search and browse, we can search our collections, all the words, dates, filter by collection, sort by. This is just giving us a, just a quick search uh, results right here. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. If we click on the Topics and Collections button, we're going to get a couple different things. We have two sections here. We have Topics towards the top, and then we have Collections towards the bottom here. Collections themselves are sort of focused on a particular on a particular subject. Topics are grouping collections together. So if I were to click on, as an example, a capital idea, the topic is going to give you maybe a, some brief information about what the topic is, as this one does about the three state capitals. And then as we scroll down, it's going to give you however many collections fall under that topic, like the chronology, the capital view, and then discover your state capital. So depending on the topic, you may have more than one collection underneath that topic. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back just to click on Governing Michigan to show you a, just a different example. To give you an idea, again, current topics in state government 2020. This topics page is arranged a little differently than just the collection tiles themselves. You can see, see things like the legislative histories, like the Emergency Management Act, the election laws, emergency powers, uh, the different executive orders based on decade, other events, and new titles. And then again, at the bottom, 
are those collections that fall underneath that topic. So as the collection of LM Digital grows, we should see more topics that will appear on that topics page. And as you can see, there's the case law, Michigan local, and then library of Michigan history. You can read all about us and say the great fire in 1951, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back up to the top and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the back button. Because this time I'm gonna click on collections because we can search collections. And then here you can see, just like that uh, particular slide in the presentation, oh, there's those same collections that I just saw about 10 minutes ago. Michigan government information, capital chronology, capital view, discover your capital, Michigan at war. This is a, a collection that actually only has one item currently in it. Uh, there was a patron who spent a good part of 20 years collecting newspaper uh, clippings of letters home during the Civil War. He searched many newspapers throughout Michigan and he bound them in small booklets and we scanned them and got his permission to put those items on LM Digital. So, you know, we want to grow this collection. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to scroll back up and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on postcards. I just want to see what happens when I search just the word postcards, just so you can sort of see, because it's a, it's a general term that I used. And there's a lot. So just for our example here, I'm gonna click on Michigan Administrative Code. And it's you know, a very whew, lengthy title there. Michigan Administrative Code 1954 Annual Supplement containing rules and regulations for just so that you have an idea of what you can expect. So as, you, as uh, you can see, we have that scroll bar and there's a lot of lot to this document here. You can see that download button that I mentioned before so that if this document did not happen to load up, we can always click on that download button to force it to load. And then depending on the item you're looking at, below the download button, you might have different sections of a document. I'm just gonna click on one. Just as an example. So that it would take us to that particular section, which happens to be R388.425, which means nothing to me at the current moment. Again, wanting to point out that as you are searching this LM Digital, the records that you see may look a little different depending on what document. It could be one page, it could be two pages. It might be like this item, 54, 54 pages long. And then again, if you remember, I said that there's item details and transcripts. Well. Sometimes you'll see an object details button or an item details button. If we click on it, just to give you an idea of what you're gonna see, it may give a little bit more uh, information about the subject or the publisher and so forth. And then a transcript if there is one attached to it. Since this is a, a scanned document, I'm not gonna go ahead and uh, click on that transcript. But what I am gonna do, I'm gonna scroll back up. I'm gonna go back to topics and collections. So I wanna kind of go back to the beginning because I wanna click on that capital idea one more time. Look for, for another example that's a little bit more interesting, such as the capital view. I wanna browse this collection. I think it contains about 300 plus postcards. So again, this might look a little bit familiar. Ooh, Michigan Capital Postcard Collection, what is this? Let's go ahead and explore this right here. As we can see, just like I mentioned in the presentation, we got our scroll bar. So this is a, a postcard within the collection. I'm gonna scroll down so that you can see the actual full postcard itself. It looks like it's a, 
a one-page postcard. Lansing, Michigan. Oh, and there's the, the back half. So you may have to scroll down to see the full postcard itself. And then just to illustrate the transcript with this item, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the transcript. And then there we go. As you can see, this item, the transcript is very short. Again, so depending on what you are looking at within LM Digital, it may have a large transcript or it may not. Again, depending on what is written on the item. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to back out of this to the very beginning, Library of Michigan Digital. And then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to put my video on and I'm going to open it up to questions for us because that is the, the bulk of the actual part of the presentation. And I want to see what everyone has to ask me about what I have spoken in the present. 